Hello, hello, and welcome once again. J76NY here, playing Grand Tactician the Civil War. This is our Union campaign. Uh, we had, in the last episode, a series of back-and-forth battles in the Richmond area between uh, our General Grant and the Confederate General Porterfield. Repeated attempts by the Confederates to retake the capital of Richmond were not successful. We managed to push Porterfield out quite a few times, actually just twice, but they are probably going to try again if I were to uh, guess. I don't think they're going to let their capital fall. Uh, we do have a situation here in the Shenandoah Valley that we have to deal with. <laughs> We've got the Army of the Potomac who is encamped right here in close proximity to the Confederate Army of the Potomac. They outnumber them um, slightly, but with the help of the Army of the Shenandoah, uh, odds are a little more even. If we could bring our Army of Northeast Virginia in, uh, we will outnumber them very significantly. So I'm going to move the Army of the Shenandoah down and the Army of the Potomac up and see if we can get into an engagement here. Uh, Policy-wise, we are five days out from having Diplomacy 1, which will give us Enfield and Lorenz rifles. It'll be nice to be able to upgrade some of our units. A lot of our units are still using the uh, standard issue, issue uh, weapons, even though we haven't done very bad with them. I'd like to get uh, a little longer range on our infantry weapons out in the west uh, low readiness is kind of keeping me from moving either one of our armies out here uh, at this point but at some point I'm going to move one of them down to Nashville they do have two supply depots out here so if I can capture that that should uh, provide a pretty good base of supply for our western forces we've got the army of west Tennessee with 4500 I don't really see that as being much of a threat. Uh, they do have uh, kind of a collection building up out here, though. So we're looking at 4,000, 20,000. Probably about, between all of these forces out here, probably about 25,000. Uh, I'm going to give probably the Army of the West a little more time to get their readiness up before we move them in. So let's uh, hit the play button see how things progress. Some of our armies are already in winter quarters. Over here we've got McClellan uh, sitting in winter quarters. But I really do want to deal with these two uh, Confederate armies here. Kind of get them out of the way so that we can push uh, these armies a little further down. I do want to take Lynchburg which is right here, I believe. Oh, right here. So we'll be taking Lynchburg once we deal with these guys. Uh, Army, or Department of Pennsylvania is moving out west. Uh, okay. And the Army of New York is probably just about in Pittsburgh while well, they're making their way there. Uh, glorious victory at Wil Wilmington, James River Squadron in retreat. So we managed to uh, push out the James River Squadron. There they go. With the uh, Black Island Sound Squadron. Um, we're going to send... It's the Army of the Potomac versus the Army of the Potomac. So Joseph Hooker versus Daniel Ruggles. Um, they've got 10,000 men. We've got 22,000, although uh, 1,300 of them are due to retreats. Low supply or low fighting spirit with low morale. It's only one brigade, though, so um, kind of surprised they didn't pull anybody else into this fight. But I will take it. Uh, we've got Commodore here in Paulding pulled up here because I was about to do something with him. This is why I never get anything done with my Navy. I should probably pause it and do what I need uh, with my Navy. We'll give him Blockading Squadron 1. And then I uh, get into this battle.
See where the uh, computer puts us. Buchanan, Virginia. Confederacy fields 9,500 men under Major General Ruggles. We field 22,000 under Joseph Hooker. All right, the Battle of Buchanan. See, enemy army is inexperienced and morale is confident. It is a attack the enemy, so we are on the offensive. I'm usually on the offensive anyway, so we have to take this objective here. Uh, it's the Appomattox Courthouse. Let's uh, get this deployment out of the way. We can start moving in. Uh, let's see, there you've got a roadway that leads directly into Appomattox Courthouse and up. So what we could do is send them up the road and then north. Fairly clear terrain, so hopefully our artillery will come into play. Get the uh, deployment out of the way here. Let's just get them deployed like that for now. Let's find our cavalry. Get them out front. Do some scouting. Probably should have pulled them back a little bit, but that's all right. Get them into marching columns. Then who do we want to put out in front for our first art infantry battalion here? Uh, we've got 5,700 men under Don Carlos Buell. Seems like that would be a good, uh, good person to have leading the charge. So, wow, the hell did they go over there for? So we'll get him set up first in line. Like this. Joseph Plummer, have you bring up the second position. Remember to do this too, long range. Long range. And then 5th Division under Lewis Hunt. Marching columns. Long range. And our final division here under John Gibbon, the Iron Brigade. Commander, historically, we're going to have him bring up the rear. He has the uh, brigade with low morale, so we could keep him in reserve. And we'll give him the order to rally right away. In the deployment phase, get everyone set up. Let's detach our cavalry and have them go out ahead slightly. I'm not going to go crazy with the uh, getting everybody out in advance. So once he starts moving, we'll get everyone else up into position and I will report back once we sight the enemy. Okay, so it is the end of the first day. We still haven't seen our uh, foes yet. Uh, we've moved everybody just about to the north of the town. Um, somehow we had someone stocked in. 
of the Pennsylvania State Militia was wounded in action, even though I don't really know where. So, we're going to get everybody kind of arranged in a battle line to take the fight to the enemy. Probably put these guys in single line formation now. Okay, Gibbon. I don't want Gibbon in the uh in the center, so we'll put Plummer in the center. Move him up a little bit. Uh Buell. Get you over here. I can actually get the mouse to do what I want it to. Hooker, we're going to move you up here. And Gibbon, let's see, with your 3,500 men. We will put you over here. And that'll be deployment. It's, uh, I guess we gotta reset everybody to long range. All right. I think he's already set. Nope. I'll detach skirmishers, maybe? Strange. I think that wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. Throw some skirmishers out. We'll even have Gibbon do it. And end the deployment. Whoop. <laughs> it looks like they've got some uh, defensive works up here. So let's move our skirmishers out. Kind of get them. Moving up a little bit. See, where do I want to send you? So that this is the area that they're defending, which it kind of looks like it is. We're going to have decent artillery line of sight over there. I've been working on, uh, or I am going to be working on not advancing my skirmishers so far out in front of their parent unit that they can't be with, with recalled if need be. So that's uh, something I'm going to be working on. Good tip I got from a fellow YouTuber, and I thank you very much for that. As I'm always saying, tips and advice in the comments below, everything is always welcome, so. 
Okay, let's make sure you're still detached. You are. I think I forgot to uh, send this one skirmisher unit out. Let's see, where do I want to put you? Put you up over here. We sighted the enemy yet? Uh, kind of, over here. So we're going to be coming at him from the uh, flank, apparently. Let's get Buell. Have him come up over here. I'm just working on moving my full brigades up slowly to advance. Gibbon. I want you to come up here. And then our cavalry. Probably send our cavalry out and around. We'll just hold them back for now. Move things along a little bit. Get everyone moving. Use roads. <clears throat> Are they firing on us yet? Uh, what to do with the cavalry? I kind of want to send them around. To hit them from the rear. This would be a, a good avenue of approach for our cavalry. But Gibbon being, uh, having one of his units demoralized. I don't know if that'd be such a good idea, so we're going to hold them into position for now. Everybody up. It working from right to left or left to right. Kind of trying to rotate my line a little bit. All right, fifth division. Move up like this. Plumber. Uh, a individual aid here. Uh, first division. Have you come up over here? Buell. Still got a skirmisher unit hanging out over here. Have them move up. And I want Buell's division to come up here. 
might take a little bit to get them up there, but. Okay, he's moving up. Get our cav up here as well. So far they haven't uh, started moving on us. We got skirmishers just hanging out in the back behind everybody. Seems my skirmishers are now behind my main line. I might want to uh, just call them all back. Okay, we took the objective. My command is green. Is all your skirmishers back? I don't think any shots have been fired. I'm gonna wait till Beagle gets into position to uh, start moving up any further. Once they start reacting to us here, they are actually moving, so that's a good thing. Have our cavalry dismount. Okay, first division's uh, morale is now confident. So we can move them up. Move you up as well. Okay, looks like Buell and Plummer are in position over here. So we can move them up as well. Uh, not sure why it's only showing strange looking kind of weird. Never seen that before. We'll see what happens. So we give them the order to move. I don't think we've uh, actually engaged them yet. Or they've been pretty passive. We took the objective and just kind of sat back. And I'm starting to hear the uh, guns firing now. Okay, you fire on that artillery battalion. What is happening here? Get you moved up. Bring you up over here. If you start f coming up, I don't know if I want you that close, but. OK, 
Okay. Have you come up over here? And Buell. I want you to come in right behind him. Slow things down a little bit here. <clears throat> Not a very large force here. They do have more coming from... Looks like they're coming down the road. Once Buell gets into motion, we can uh, start hitting these guys in the rear. They've got a skirmisher detachment set out. Okay, Hughes. Okay, let's have you pick up position right across this road. So, cavalry in here. Start ordering our brigades forward now. Yeah, this whole division needs to move forward. Here seems to be still moving into position. Get you a little closer to your men. Move them up. Like there's a big clump down here. Let's have our cavalry come out. I'm trying to keep uh, Gibbon's division slightly to the rear just in case his uh, morale goes to shit in the middle of the battle. Alright, these guys are in position right now. Start ordering them into position to uh, hit them from the rear.
Parker Stockton who was wounded before he even made it to the battlefield. Uh, let's have you come over here and deal with this artillery. And then we can bring you down here. Start fixing individual targets here. And they're already retreating. Ah, okay. I don't know where they're going to retreat to, but they're retreating. So we'll just uh, pick some targets for our boys to uh, fight and send them in. There we go. Everyone's got their, uh, their orders. They are attacking. And you are moving over there. You moving? Don't worry yet. Okay. So we already have a major victory. Whoop, don't want to go that fast. See if I can get Buell out over here to cut them off. That would be great. Whole army just disintegrated. Brigade. Let's have you uh have you charge Reynolds. You can charge Reynolds as well. You can charge uh Gladden. Okay. Everybody's in contact. Got our one one army out here just Field Reynolds, let's see who's bigger. Have you charge him? Let's just charge the guys that are in the field here. They're gonna be running right into us, so have you come up and hit him over here? You can hit him as well. Let's uh let's mount up. Mount Want them to charge. Everybody hit Reynolds. Sheffield, sorry. Main state militia. Down in oh oh actually that. Go after him. All 
charge. Charge. Where our third, uh, there he is. There's Zook back here. He's engaged, but not really doing anything, so we'll send him up to charge DR Jones's brigade. Might be a little bit. No, no, maybe not. Keep charging them. Anyone over here we have to deal with? Doesn't look like it. We got the main state militia chasing down Gladden. The rest of these guys just hanging out. Which I'm okay with. That would be uh, Hunt's division. Keep charging. I want at least one of them to surrender. Here we go. Glorious victory. Major victory. Uh, Confederate Army of the Potomac suffered 4,000 of 9,500. Half of their guns, half of their men. Uh, we suffered 765 casualties. Uh, most of those being infantry. Alright. I'll take that battle. Buchanan. Never heard of it. But then again, there's a lot of places I've never heard of. Uh, let's see. National morale drops by 0.95 and our military experiences your experience rises by 1.05. That's... Trying to think of what I want to do now. I want to continue uh, pushing in the Shenandoah Valley. I do want to get my Western armies moving before I forget. So once we get back here... Alright, we'll see the results of this battle. The Army of the Potomac. Yeah, they, he did take kind of a readiness hit on that, but that's okay. Uh, we still do have Irving McDowell moving down, probably going to encounter the army of uh, the Shenandoah pretty soon. It looks like we've got some, uh, some action going on up here. Hampton's division with 13,000. 11,000, so that brings him up to 24,000, and if it brings the Army of Tennessee, it'll be about 30,000 against Grant's 34,000. Um, let's see if we can do anything with Grant as far as adding some, uh, some units here. So we'll add a new group. Let's see what we can add. And we do have, uh, some recruits available but not enough to really form up a proper division so we're going to leave that alone for now okay army of washington uh I could transfer the entire Army of Washington out to uh, Grant. Or I could transfer it to um, Mr. McClellan here. He's kind of under strength. Might not be a bad idea to kind of split these guys up. Grant is closer to the front line, and I kind of have more faith in Grant. But then again, do I want to leave Washington completely open? I mean, at this point, with them uh, being pushed south, does it matter? What would you do? That's what I'd like to know. Would you take the uh, Army of Washington and split it up between the Army of the Shenandoah and uh, Department of Ohio? 
or would you leave it as is? Kind of torn myself, that's why I'm asking. So. Input is always welcome. Comment section is a wonderful thing. And I'm uh, growing my channel, getting close to 200 uh, subscribers. So that makes me feel pretty good. We got a pretty good uh, little community forming here. And uh, I like hearing from you guys, so uh, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, I'm going to call this episode right now. It's uh, 40 minutes in, so we will uh, get into the uh, actual planning for the winter months in the next episode, probably. Uh, let me know, if, like I said, what you do with the Army of Washington. Um, Western Army, let's do that before I forget. And then I'll call the episode, so... We're going to take the larger of the two. Actually, we're going to take the smaller of the two, which is you, and send you right to Nashville. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's episode. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button. Leave your thoughts, tips, and advice in the comments below. Like I've said about five times, sorry. Don't mean to be getting repetitive here. Um, if you'd like to follow along through the rest of the campaign and offer your guidance to yours truly, hit the subscribe button. The more the merrier. And we will see you for the month of December in 1861 on Grand Tactician, J76NY, saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.